Well, let's start with the law library. All inmates are allowed access to the law library to fight your case, to try to get a sentence reduction, get warrants dropped, detainers dropped. They have access to a telephone. I don't know how many times a week or how many minutes they get in Florida to call. They also have access to visiting. So they will have contact with people on the outside. What about the internet, and myself, well, they should not have any access to the internet. I mean, in the federal system, you have access to email where you can email things back and forth, but there's no pictures, there's no documents. And mm -hmm. I can't see them jumping on Google browsing something, not inside the prison. So then why would, why would prison likely. officials seize the computer just for internal documents and things of that nature, maybe planning on this computer? Well, it's possible that they use the computers inside the law library to research case law and such, to send emails to someone on the outside directing them as far as what they wanted to do. But mm. I could go into any prison law library in the United States as an inmate create my own documents on a typewriter hmm. just using other inmates paperwork with a little bit of whiteout and I could could have created this order myself to get these guys out. Wow. So when we hear about this forging of paperwork that was clearly su successful in this case, have you heard of this happening before? Well, I'll give you an example. I was in okay. a federal prison in El Paso, Texas, Latuna Federal Prison, and some of the inmates there had outstanding warrants. They had detainers that were preventing them from being released. I drew up paperwork and sent it into the court back in California where they had their detainers out of. And mistakenly, the California state court system looked at the paperwork that I sent in and actually lifted the detainers on these people. And the federal prison was ready to release them just based on something that I manually created on a typewriter and sent in. So yes, wow. I'm real familiar with this. Wow. So we have this kind of escape. Now there is a national spotlight on this issue of forging documents that people are well, reviewing. They're reviewing, but are there... He, Go ahead. Well, there's more to this. In order to actually get this in the right hands to get somebody who's serving a life sentence released, you've got to have somebody in the courthouse. I'm not talking somebody at the window, at the filing window. Hmm. Somebody on the inside took this paperwork and they put it in the flow, the chain of paperwork. It was already supposedly stamped, signed by the judge. They just stuck it in the stack of paperwork. Then it went through the normal distribution process. It hmm. went to the Florida Department of Corrections. In turn, they sent a copy of it to the prison they were being held at before the prison, before R&D, receiving and discharge, released them, they then called back to the court, talked to the clerk to validate, is this release order real? Yeah. Well, they pulled up a copy of the counterfeit order and said, yes, this is real, release them.